Greetings and howdy howdy. Coming to you today to talk about uh, the marketing slogan that basically Coca-Cola and a lot of other food companies use to say, eat whatever you want because a calorie is a calorie. We're going to talk about that coming up. But first let me say I'm Chip. This is uh, CP59FIT is the channel. My other channel is Chillin' with Chip. And I'm about to get into a lot of chilling with this new uh, house sitting gig I have started and my new uh, work for a international charity. I noticed on the last video I looked kind of like I was staring off into space so I guess I, I shouldn't watch myself <laughs> in the video and maybe I'll look a little more natural. Since I have the camera facing me, I see myself. Anyway, let's get back to... Uh, a calorie is not a calorie. I've been telling you I'm going to talk about sugar, and I have received the book Fat Chance by, where's his name? Doctor, I know it's Dr. Robert Lustig, but I'm not sure where it, oh, it's under that sticker of Heather's pick. This is a used book, so I don't know who Heather is or why she put a sticker on the book, but uh, MD, Dr. Robert Lustig, so he's a medical doctor. He's also a pediatric neurological endocrinologist so he does a lot with diabetes diabetes and obese children has also done a rotation at St. Jude's and uh, does a lot of work with the University of California San Francisco as a professor emeritus but in the third chapter of this book he addressed had a uh, I guess a section of a, a chapter where he talks about why a calorie isn't a calorie. And I'm not going to read it right to you, but I'm going to try to summarize. Because so many of us have been taught, or our mindset is that, you know, if you're going to eat it, burn it. You know, I guess the whole mantra of modern nutrition is eat less, move more. And that's based on the theory that a calorie is a calorie, and if you take it in, you got to burn it off. So let's discuss at least three, three, <laughs> three of those uh, principles, why I don't believe a calorie is a calorie, and then I'll give you a bonus one right at the end, which is really common sense. So what he says, first of all, is that there's no way to actually burn off our intake. When you realize, you know, as the Coca-Cola ad say, oh, just eat, you can drink a Coke because it's no worse than a juice, which is probably correct. A lot of orange juices have more sugar than a Coca-Cola. But I'm not here to advertise for any particular soda brand, since we should probably all be cutting back on that. And while we're talking about that, let me tell you, I think I'm going to be cutting out my uh, Diet Mountain Dew here real soon, because I've also learned from Dr. Lustig that there's a new study out that shows that even the artificial sweeteners do cause an insulin, can, can cause an insulin spike. So that'll be my one improvement. I've already canceled my... Uh, soft drink or actually it's soft drinks tea coffee cold hot drinks anything subscription down at the local convenience store i have like two more days before it expires i guess i could still get iced tea or coffee or whatever but i'll probably continue getting diet Mountain Dew until i cut myself off even though it is uh i've always been against diet drinks but uh with the transition to low carb i, I started drinking some but now I'm going to be getting rid of those in the very near future. I do still have a little bit in my, my polar bottle over here. Anyway, back to why you can't burn what you eat. When you realize that one chocolate chip cookie, uh, the calories from that would be equivalent to a 20 minute jog. And that one Big Mac is equivalent to four hours of biking. You kind of begin to realize that uh, burning it off is not the best option by increasing activity. You know, I guess a lot of these gyms are based on the concept that if, if you just come in and exercise, you'll get fitter. And to some extent that is true, but it has a lot more to do with what you put in the mouth than what you take off on the weight bench. I'm not against gyms, and exercise has all kinds of beneficial aspects. Weight loss is not necessarily one of them, though. Weight maintenance could be, 
but if you're already overweight, why do you want to maintain the weight? So let's look at the op other options for weight loss. But let's see what else I have written down here. Okay, many of us were well aware of when Michael Phelps was winning gold medal after gold medal that he was, it was announced that he was eating 1,200 calories, I'm sorry, 12,000 calories a day, but yet he was burning it all off in, in the pool. Well, have you ever thought to think of what his uh, regimen was for getting ready to win a gold medal? He was probably in the pool eight or nine or 10 hours a day doing high intensity swimming skills. If you can do that, feel free to eat 12,000 calories a day and you'll stay fit like he is. But most of us don't have that kind of time or that kind of determination to put that much effort into exercise. So a lot, I'm finding, you know, a lot of our concepts are probably accurate in the big picture, but when you get it down to your individual, um, individual life, it, it's not necessarily gonna work for you. So, uh, and really, if it did work, why would there have to be 500 different diets and 5,000 fat loss books? Because if one thing worked, then one person could write it up, one person could teach it, and we'd all be metabolically healthy, which we are not. That brings up another point. I saw a video from Dr. Sean Baker, who many of you may have been seen on YouTube. His videos may have come up after mine if the algorithm thinks you like carnivore and low carb type of stuff. He, read, he had a little short the other day about a study released by Tufts University very recently that said uh, a little bit less than 7% of the people in the United States are metabolically fit. The reverse of that is that almost 93% or just over 93, I think it's 93.2% of people in the United States are not metabolically fit. So his, the title of that video, if you want to look it up, is Resistance is Futile. He said maybe it's almost like they even planned it that way because basically you're going to lose. So that kind of goes into the teaching that a calorie is a calorie is not working <laughs> and that you can uh, eat less and move more is not working. We're going to stick with the sugar one or the calorie one for today. Okay, Dr. Lustig's uh, second a response to a calorie, why a calorie is a calorie is an inaccurate statement, goes back to basic uh, physics and metabolic. My notepad fell down. Uh, basically that all fat calories are, or all fat is nine calories per gram. All carbs and protein are basically 4.1 calories per gram. And then, uh, if they were all the same, I mean, if they technically are all the same, but then why do people lose weight by eating a certain fat or a certain protein and not another one? And his response was that there are higher calorie fats and there are higher calorie proteins. And even broke sugars down into two, two things, which I did not hear in the video, The Bitter Truth. Uh, that I've been watching but basically he said that eggs are a higher quality protein than ground beef and that they may even actually make you less hungry or satiate your hunger longer so even though ground beef and eggs both are nine calories per gram of fat that one of them has a better effect on how your body metabolizes it so therefore the calories don't uh, don't act the same when you're burning them up and uh, one one thing he broke down that I, I'm gonna start using from now on when I use the word sugar he said there's only two car two types of carbohydrates there's the starches and then there's the sugar and by sugar he, he and I both are going to start meaning sucrose, like table sugar, and fructose, and or high fructose corn syrup, which is in almost everything you buy in a store these days that's even minimally processed. And when I get into my sugar videos, I'm gonna break down the difference in those, but let's just say that 
over the past week, I have started uh, increasing my consumption of starches, pasta, bread, potatoes, etc. And my weight has continued to decline and stayed below the obese mark. I have tried to cut out all sucrose and fructose, which is table sugar and uh, artif well, not artificial sweet. Fructose is a real sweetener. In fact, table sugar is half fructose. It's half sucrose, half, fr I'm sorry, half glucose, half fructose. So that's why I'm just going to say sugar from now on, but I have to bring that up in a lot of videos because I, a lot of people think glucose is sugar, and it is a sugar. That's the sugar you get from starches. That's also the sugar that every cell in your body and every cell in every human living body on this planet needs to operate. So I'm not going to go into all the details, but you use about 80% of that before it ever gets to the liver. Hope that bug, that ant crawling across my screen is not coming up on the video. And then we have the third one. And that's based on the United States Department of Agriculture charge that they put out. They actually have uh, nutrition, nutrient tracking, what they call nutrient disappearance. And so ever since they came out with the food pyramid back in the 70s, they've been tracking, you know, on the big picture, how people, I guess in America, eat. Percentage of carbs, percentage of protein, percentage of fat. And what they have found is that a lot of people are following the guidelines to their own detriment, basically. They haven't admitted that, but if you notice from when the food pyramid came out, our obesity epidemic has spiked since then. It's on a swift trajectory going up, up, up. More, In other words, more and more people getting fat and obese every single year by following their medical advice and the USDA which is the medical advice, because if the doctors don't tell you what the government says, then people get mad at them. And a lot of the employers get mad at them because they're all bought out. Maybe not directly, but there's no science behind that food pyramid. I've already made a video on that. But um, what the, the government, the U.S. government has found, I'd like to get that ant off my phone. We are overrun by ants around here this year. And you can tell it's another cloudy day. It's supposed to be raining tomorrow. I'll probably be working on the screen door under the canopy tomorrow. But Sunday, I'm going out to a lilac farm with my friend Judy. And it's supposed to be sunny then. So any videos I get made today, hopefully before it rains, will get posted tonight or tomorrow. Another reason I'm looking at moving around the country is it has been so rainy. Oh, there it is on my cord now. There we go, knock it off. Let it go get eaten by something. <laughs> oh, there's some black raspberries that are kind of ripe along the boundary here. I'm going to pause this for a second. If not completely ripe, they are ripening. So there's some red raspberries at the moment. But I, I ate some red ones the other day before I realized they were black ones. But then when I came back, a black one had ripened and they are much less sweet than the red ones but I had a seed coming out uh, they, they get caught in your teeth so I guess this microphone helps you from seeing seeds in my teeth if I have any let's get back to the food pyramid but anyway there's a lot of those berries around here and there's also a whole bunch at that nature preserve I met Judy at so I may try to get out there later this afternoon before the rain get a whole bucket full let my landlord make some jam out of them or something but I'm not really supposed to eat the jam so we'll see she likes it though. So anyway, the total consumption of fat and protein since the uh, food pyramids were made and between whatever Dr. Lustig's book was written, I think 2013, he had said that total consumption of fat and protein had stayed relatively the same, but yet the obesity, obesity had skyrocketed. There's another ant on my thing. They're everywhere. I hope they're not eating up my legs. I don't feel them. But anyway, that was basically because we were told to go low carb when the, I'm sorry, low fat when the food pyramids came out, which means high carb. And what they do with the high carb stuff, the 
they took the fat out of so it didn't taste good anymore, they added sugar. Sucrose, same thing, sugar, fructose, sucrose, it's all the same. That's why the world got fat when the food pyramids came out because in order to make cardboard edible, they had to put sugar in it. So what did happen from a percent of total calories, fat went down 10%, but the actual consumption stayed the same. So that is a difference, but let me continue here. Uh, oh, and this is getting to be 15, 20 minutes. So I'm almost done though. Uh, but what, uh, what happened with uh, carbohydrates? On a percentage of total calories, they went from 40 to 55% after the food pyramid came out. So, of course, that's probably the most success the government's had at anything. But it, if you n listen to Nina Tyklos with the uh, Nutrition Council, she points out in one of her speeches that the whole world really did follow the food pyramid very well. Consumption of meat went down, consumption of grains went up. And that's what uh, Dr. Lustig mentioned, too only a 10% drop in fat even though the amount stayed the same but total cal calories went up so is a calorie really a calorie when you're eating a whole lot more and not burning it off I don't think so I will get into this more and more this is just the introduction to my probably four-part series on sugar because there's this is one of two books I have to read about the white powder that's killing us all and I'm only on chapter three of the this was written to the public but for doctors because his publisher said he would not they would not publish it if he wrote it for doctors so he wrote it for doctors but he told the publisher it was for the public so it's a little bit of a intense reading but as I get more settled in these house sits and I'm not packing up to move again. I will have more time and desire to read. So the sugar videos are coming. You got a, a tease today. But you had to really realize that a calorie is not a calorie in the way we've always thought about it. And also you got to kind of get rid of the concept that eating less and moving more will make you healthy. Really, if you get on low carb, healthy fat, you can lose weight with no exercise. Kind of like I'm doing. I mean, every once in a while, I do lift a little bit of weights to do the high-intensity training that Dr. McGuff's, uh, an ER doctor out of Florida, has kind of created. I don't do it very often. You're supposed to do it once a week. I've probably done it once or twice in the last couple of months. I need to get back into that also. But, uh, okay, so for the bonus, where is a calorie a calorie? In a bomb calorimeter. We are not a bomb calorimeter, so don't expect a bit calorie to burn the same way. But the real reason, I guess, that wraps all of these together is that your body is actually smarter than your brain. So if you reduce your intake and you increase your activity, your body is going to reduce its, uh, the amount of calories it burns because it thinks it's starving. So yeah, your brain can say, eat less, move more. I'll lose weight, but your body says, you're trying to kill me, so stop, <laughs> you know, I'm going to conserve what I have. So yeah, it's not, some of these things that we think make perfectly good sense is not how our body works because we have down-regulating hormones to keep you alive. You know, just like the other day, I talked about one that was good. Well, there's a bird chasing a bug. Oh, he got it, I think. <laughs> so the babies will have something to eat. <laughs> Anyway, we have, I've talked about something that was good when it down-regulated, but not so good when it up-regulated. And your body probably is smarter than your brain because it needs to keep you alive, even though the brain is running the body, but it's also running how we think about things. So that's all for today. I'm going to get this in if it doesn't get out the way of my button. Anyway, y'all have a good day. God bless America and the rest of the world. Be safe.